Not sure where we're going to honeymoon for sure yet, but all I know is that it's going to be good. Lots of bonding. Bonding. Between a newlywed. Approved by the Lord, finally. Becoming one. Bondage. And holy matrimony. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I truly don't think you're going to be a horrible mother. Thank you. Because why? That kid's got an awesome aunt. He's gonna <laughs> <laughs> like, this is scary for me to go through. And to um, be able to lean on you and like have like an older sister figure. No, I love you. So Got it in my own glam. <laughs> Not wasting any money right now. <laughs> the following podcast is a Dear Media production. Pretty basic. I was gonna say good morning, which like good I don't, morning, good morning everybody. Morning, it is a brisk, San Diego. It is a brisk three fifty five p.m. Mm -hmm. Good morning, good everyone. Good morning. We should talk like newscasters. Do your best impression. Hello and good morning. Today we are here at the Pretty Basic Studio. My Ooh. name is Alicia Marie, your co-host. Hello. Oh fuck, I'm bad at no, it. No, it's good. Keep going. Keep going. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Remy Cruz. Ooh, <laughs> a smooth butter. Do you have any friends that are newscasters now? No, but I love the TikToks. I have quite a few. Really? Mm -hmm. And quite a few people from my high school moved on to be newscasters. Riverside, what is up with you? <laughs> no, I don't know anyone. That's Shout out funny. to Olivia Sandusky. <laughs> I don't know where she is though. I, I think live she went to Palm Springs. Oh, is that where she's doing the news? I think so. Damn. It is 112 degrees again here in Palm Springs. <laughs> Palm Yet Desert. again, it's hot as fuck. We have another heat wave. Back to you, Janelle. <laughs> Back to you, Janelle. <laughs> You're good <laughs> at it. <laughs> it feels stupid to do a podcast. Like when we're not wearing headphones, it just feels dumb. I know. It feels <laughs> Should like, we put them back on? No, no, no. It's fine. Okay. Everyone wants to see your earrings. Yeah, sorry, guys. I had little earrings on. I was like, maybe we should do no headphones. Where are they from? Give us an off of the day. Thank you so much. Uh, so my look today is from, it's from all over. My earrings are from Amazon. Love it. These ones are Amazon. These ones are Macy's. And then these ones are 14 carats. Ooh. And then um, my outfit is from Revolve. It's so cute. Which became a sponsor, Pretty Basic. And let me tell you, easiest ad read of my life. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I love Revolve. I'm not sure if that's this episode, but Revolve, feel free to sponsor every episode because I <laughs> love you. Um, this outfit was from the Mariana Hewitt collection. It is. It's chic. Thank it's you. It's luxe, but it also looks extremely comfortable. It is very comfortable. I'm giving Mother of the Bride. I saw, I've been trying to dress more like, Mariana-esque or mm -hmm. like, you know, that quiet luxury. Yeah, sophisticated Sophia Richie. I mean, like I'm turning 30 next year. I was like, I feel like I need to step it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Every morning I wake up and I'm like, what leggings am I wearing today? And what <laughs> sweatshirt am I wearing today? And you're like, let me change it up. Yeah, let me just like switch it up a bit. So I saw, I was trying to like emulate her fashion and then my queen actually dropped like a clothing collection with, she became the creative director of La Academy. Is mm -hmm. that how you say it? And I was like, Ugh. I, t I literally messaged her cause she's a friend of the show. She came on the pod. And I was like, just so you know, I literally try to copy you. And now you made it even easier for me to copy you mm -hmm. because I just add a cart, add a cart, add a cart. Mm -hmm. And now I'm fully dressed. Ring is from Cal Robert Parsons and shoes are from Jeffrey Campbell. These have become my go-to they're kind of weird looking. Like there's a triangular heel, but they're my go-to. No, I go -to. love it. <gasps> Thank it's you. Different. I'm so glad that I bought these because these are my go-to wedding shoes because as we all know, uh, or event shoes too, if it works, because if my feet aren't showing because my feet are constantly hurting. No, I- In heels. Yeah. And all the time. And I finally have a pair of shoes that like are nude and I can wear it all day long. I love that. Thank um, you. And I genuinely mean that, unlike you earlier. We should roll that clip before- we filmed this I episode. I did genuinely mean it. No, I don't think you did. I did. I don't think you did. Okay. We're- Our first fight. I was gonna say our second fight ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, we can get into that later in the episode. Yeah, I think we will get into that later. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I yesterday I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, I should prank Remy and wear the most hideous outfit <laughs> that I can think of to the studio and just get your reaction. Okay. So this morning I'm getting dressed. I'm like trying different things. And I will say, I wanted it to be somewhat believable. Cause I was like, if I just like show up literally looking like a clown, you're gonna be like, what are you wearing? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, okay, it has to be somewhat believable. Um, Ash helped me a little bit. And <laughs> needless to say, this was her reaction. Very funky. Cute, right? Cute. You're giving um, like Lizzie McGuire. Oh my God. So Lizzie I McGuire. love it. One. Wait, we are very different vibes though. Yeah, we are. It's Mother, Mother. Brian, and Lizzie McGuire. It is. 
Guys, we're at the studio. I completely forgot to film for outfit number one. We are now in outfit number two. Rem said I look like Liz McGuire, and honestly, that was like the biggest compliment you could ever say. You look like Isabella. Do you like it? I love it. I mm. love it. I like the vest. Really? Yeah. Why? You can eat it. Just say you are all coming back and they're doing her vest. I knew you would say you like this. The Ruby, vest? this is a hideous outfit. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't wear it. Fashion is a form of expression. And you chose to express yourself in an ugly way today. I literally... <laughs> I really wasn't judging. I'm not here to judge. I feel attacked. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I thought you looked great. I think you said I looked ugly. I chose ugly. You didn't choose it, but I chose ugly. <laughs> I said... You looked like Lizzie McGuire. Did Lizzie McGuire, was that not an innuendo for you looking crazy? <laughs> In so a you nice agree. way? You agree. You <laughs> agree. You are a passive aggressive bitch. No, I think <laughs> that kidding. you looked, I, I really wasn't that bad. No, but I wanted it to be believable. Also to like be frank, you also, as I was sitting here waiting to start, you were like, Whitney, I was like channeling you this morning. Like that was fucking rude. <laughs> 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 so then I was like, I wouldn't think anything of it. So so you were like, wow, your outfit's ugly and you no, said that? I literally didn't think anything of your outfit. To be frank, like we have very different styles. We're just so different. You know what? <laughs> we're so different. And would I have worn it? No. But did you pull it off? I mean, you pulled it off better than I could. And who am I to come on here and say, that looks bad? I just think as a best friend, I would want you to be like, hey, I love you. But like, let's, let's wear some merch this episode. And you know what? <laughs> If we're going to play it that way, uh -oh. you know, this is a low stakes situation. <laughs> it's just a podcast. We've done 600 of these. Uh -huh. So you have one floppy outfit. But to let me meet Lana Del Rey <laughs> in the outfit that you let me walk out the door in, let's really talk about that, shall we? I actually really liked it. I looked horrible. I liked it. <laughs> We're so different. We're so different. <laughs> We're just so different. I love how I that's catching on. I get random like comments about it. We're so, like, different. We're so different. No, I mean, okay. The outfit like conventionally wasn't amazing, but you said you've been doing your Pinterest. I was, I, you said that, that you looked planting. like Whitney. So, I was I, I, so am I going to sit here and say, you literally just got through <laughs> saying my producer, wonderful friend of the show, Whitney. You're like, oh, I challenge you, Whitney. I, like, I was really thinking of you this morning, putting the outfit on. Then I'm going to say, you look fugly. <laughs> okay, I feel that. <laughs> However, in my head, I was like, no, like, Wit actually pulls off anything and looks so sick and cool doing it. But she like, does. I didn't. That was the point. Like, oh, I tried to be like you because you're so good at this. And, like, it looks like she just throws random shit together and it looks so chic and cool. And, like, um, Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> you were really giving Isabel. You know what it was? Isabella. It was because of the green, the green and the brown hair. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Sugar. I mean, Again, you wore it way better than I would have, truly. And that's true. And that's okay. Would you like me to speak out next time? What were you expecting, I'd say, that it was bad? No, I, literally this morning, I'm putting on all my outfits, and I go, literally, Rem is such a gem. She's going to be like, oh, my God, I like it. <laughs> like, I knew But you know what? Some people are going to be like, she's a fake friend. She doesn't <laughs> she's actually. She's a fucking fake friend. Fake. I, to be frank, like, it wasn't great, but it wasn't, it wasn't the worst outfit I've ever seen. I didn't agree with the tights with the red Gucci bag. <laughs> I have to say... I agree with that because in person, I feel like it looked so much better. Mm. And then I watched the TikTok back mm -hmm. and I was like, fuck, this doesn't look good. And I'm like, I'm trying to do fashion videos. <laughs> and then all the comments on that styling video were like, mm, like this isn't it. And I was like so embarrassed, but I was like, but I just got these bag in the shoes I'm so excited about. So cute. So I agree. The tights, it clashed. I should have kept the white tank top. I was trying too hard. The white tank top was cute. Mm -hmm. I thought the white top was cute too. It was just like the the bows. Like there was a lot going on. Uh -huh. um, that was my bad. No, I mean, that's what fashion is all about. Self-expression, trial and error. You can't wear an ugly outfit. You can only not rock an... <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Like the confidence Profound. to like, and you can wear anything as long as you have the with confidence. confidence. Clearly I didn't have confidence with the tights or this one. Clearly I had too much confidence when I walked out the day that we met Lana. Honestly, I li I stand by, it. I like the dress. Mm, I really don't. Well, my outfit of the day, <laughs> my yeah. outfit of the day. That's so cute. My top is from Jaded London. It's like a, a strapless sweater material. It is a little like, like it falls kind of a lot, mm. but it is really cute. The back of oh, the sides crochet. That's so cute. Um, my jeans, I also got from Revolve. They kind of have this like shiny, <gasps> oh, like they waxy. Are, they're yeah. like kind of waxy. Um, that's all. Where <laughs> the, oh, you said Revolve. Revolve. Uh -huh. Very cute. My necklace is Ollie. He got it for me for Christmas. Aww. 
know why I like this necklace? Hmm. This charm doesn't really move. It's stuck between <gasps> these two. Oh, that's so, so it's nice. always at the front and you never have a crooked necklace. I'm like, more necklaces need to be like this. I'm always wearing that C necklace and it's always twisting around. Like, I get yeah. so uh, annoyed when I look at a video. No, it's so annoying. <sighs> well, how have you been, girl? Honestly, I've been really good. good. Except I haven't really talked about this yet, but my girlies have been at training. Yeah. Um, because Rosie bit someone. <gasps> and luckily they were fine. She only went after their baggy, baggy pants. Also, in your defense, he was really trying it. No, like, yeah. He's so sweet, but he just kept like trying. And we're like, no, 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 like stop. And he was like, maybe now. And he kept like going back no. to her and moving very swiftly. So we were working on the Pretty X Unfiltered pod room, mm -hmm. you know, the studio. And we were working on some things. And one of Heath and Mariah's friends, also our friend, Jordan, like comes through the door and it was late at night because he was dropping off Mariah's laptop. And I like go over there and I do the thing um, where I'm like, oh my God, like nice to meet you. This is Rosie, let's meet. You know, we kind of sit down. She's like barking at him very aggressively. And I'm like, Rosie, like, it's okay. Like, it's a friend, <laughs> you know, like, let's sit, let's introduce. And she still seemed on edge. And I'm like, that's weird. Normally by now, after I introduce her to someone, she's like, fine, especially her. Chloe will bark forever, <laughs> but Rosie will bark. But once they're in the house and she can tell it's fine, she usually chills out. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't stop barking. I was like, maybe because it's late. He was wearing like really baggy clothes and stuff. And then we walk in and I'm like, that's weird. I pick her up and I bring her to her, like the kitchen and grab treats because that always works. Hello. So then by the time I walk back, um, she's like already kind of like following him and I come and I have the treats and I like go to get take one out and give it to Rosie. Like, hey, it's fine. She lunges after him, bites his baggy like parachute pants, shakes her head so aggressively. I've never seen her be like, like shaking her, her head. And I was like, oh, Rosie. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so like, this. she's never done this before. Like, oh my God, I'm so, so sorry. And he's just like, like Jordan, poor Jordan. He was just like standing there like, oh, like kind of scared. And then Heath and Mariah chilling. He wasn't scared. He was like, I just don't know what to do. Like yeah. he was, we also found out that he's been bitten by multiple other no. dogs. So like he, yes. I think there's like, there's an aura and or there something. There is a blood type. There is something. I don't know what it is. Like literally Heath and Mariah are kind of like chilling. Anyways, we introduced him. Rosie's still not having it. I put her on her like harness and leash and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm so sorry. He leaves. And then I apologize again to Heath and Mariah. I'm like, I am so sorry. And they're like, don't worry. This happens a lot. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, there's something like, he's just like, dogs don't like him. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I don't know. Like, I literally was like, why are you guys being so chill? Like my dog almost uh, like uh, almost ate your best friend. Like what the hell? Um, and then um, they're like, yeah, there's something about him. And then, and then, it, then what flashed to my head is when I did give him a treat. So him and Rosie could meet, he puts the treat like right in front of his nose and goes eye level with her. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe don't do that because she will bite your face off. Like maybe let's not do that. Um, needless to say, I saw him the other night at Patricia's birthday party. And I'm like, Jordan, I like grab him. I'm like, I just need you to know that I put my girls in training um, a little boot camp, and you were the cherry on top. I was like, there were some other instances, nothing that bad, and you were my last straw of yeah. Well, she they're also, going to training. She, she's they, a rescue. Well, yeah, she's a rescue. They found her on the streets. Yeah, right? but I mean, I've had her since 2020. Like, she's never done anything I like mean, that. I know, but stuff like stuff like that happens. And I know you don't know where. Like, she, you said at one point she had puppies and then got those taken away. Like, yeah, there's a lot that like we don't know. And like, also, as much as there are babies. Sometimes things happen that like that, and you're like, oh my God, they're an animal. They're an animal. They're oh my an God. animal. Fully. And like, obviously, I'm glad they put them in training because obviously, like, that is not okay, but um, I'm glad that they are going to learn. Wait, I got such a funny video. I'll show you later. It's like Rosie's playing with all the dogs and it pans to Chloe, and she's. Oh, like, I watched it already. Oh, oh my God. She's it's so mine good. Mine are like that too. Oh my God. So I Daisy's sent them like to the same training place that, or trainer that uh, Remy sent her girls yes. to. Yes. Big shout out to Miles Speaks Dog. Miles. He's really great. I sent all three of mine to training because when we got Luna, didn't know we were keeping Luna and Luna was a crazy puppy. I was like, as soon as she's got her shots, can you please take her? I don't know what to do. And he took all of them and they are like, they're so good. And they have like their little spots now. And it's just been, it, they're really good. Well, I'm seeing them Friday for the first time in two weeks. Um, we're meeting at a park and we're going to go over everything they've learned. I know it's so much more training the owners than yeah. like the dogs more yeah. than anything. Obviously the dogs too, but it's more the owners and stuff. So um, hopefully he, it was so cute. He was like, cause they're both 10. Chloe's almost 11 and Daisy. They're turning 10. Are you sure? Yeah, we got him in Daisy's, um, not me getting her birthday. May wrong. 18th, 2014. I got her on August 3rd, 2014. 
Oh my god! So they're turning ten. They're turning ten. Oh, they're thank nine. God. Yeah. Okay. They're nine. They're turning ten. Mm-hmm. Little old ladies. <laughs> he was like, you can't really necessarily change who they are, mm-hmm. but you can change how they react to things. Mm-hmm. Like, like maybe they'll see another dog or they'll see a person they may not like them, but they'll be like, well, I don't like them, but I trust you, mom. And mom's telling yeah. me I should be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where if it's a puppy, they're more like, oh, friend. You know what I mean? Like they can like change more of who they are. Daisy's a grumpy old girl mm-hmm. and she's always been a grumpy old girl. Even from a puppy, she's always been really grumpy and she's still a grumpy old lady. Aww. But it's definitely like one of those things, yeah, where she's like, okay, like if you say it's fine. Yeah, like fine. And Luna's whatever. just like berserk going crazy uh but i'm excited to see them it has been a little quiet at the house i was so missing i shouldn't say i fed squirrels should i <laughs> i showed it cal please please <laughs> i i mariah i felt like you i literally was like i miss my girls so much so i set out some nuts for the squirrels i named him leonard leonard Na- nard for short is that bad or anything nard i was like nard sounds like it could be leonard I, I like have the thought like I wonder if that this probably means like fucking like something crazy Some crazy crazy sex something. <laughs> we knew Nard means testicles. Nard Nard Nard. Hey, well, he, li- he likes Nard. eating nuts. Nard, Nard. Leonard. Leonard Leonard just one kept coming back. Yeah, he keeps. <gasps> oh, he keeps coming back for the walnuts. Oh, that's funny. That's so sweet of yeah, you. Yeah, but they're gonna hate it when the girls are back. You're so Mark Robber. Is that his name? Rober? Oh that guy God. that does the squirrel thing? Yes. <laughs> you should do it in your backyard. You are so right, Ram. Mm-hmm. Other than missing them, I've been really good, though. Good. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. Sorry. I feel like we just switched lives. I'm like, I'm good. I just fed the squirrel. <laughs> like, that is so you. I know. That I was going to say, so it reminds you. me of Tinky. I hope Tinky's doing well. What was that? The hedgehog? Or no. Possum? I wish. Possum? You can't have a hedgehog in California, but I wish. Oh. It was a possum. Oh. She was so little and cute. But Mother of the Bride, how are we feeling? <gasps> I know. Okay, this outfit is very much giving Mother of the Bride. I'm hoping we said that on camera. It was funny if my reference was I funny. Because you giving, said it. I'm giving Mother. I'm giving like 50-year-old woman. But it's so like chic and classic. Really? Mm-hmm. You know what I... I had this like sweater on the other day that I was with you. And you could like... It was like an open knit cardigan and I kept like crossing my arms <laughs> over it. And I was like, I'm so mom at the soccer game like I, in a Nancy Myers movie. I get why. My like divorced husband yes. is across the field with his new mistress. It's and I'm just like <laughs> with my wine and my Stanley Tumblr. Okay, cosplay. She's like. <laughs> <sighs> it's cold, brisk morning. That's so funny. I'm sorry. We have to stop the podcast real quick. I am floored that we have this sponsor. I am low-key fangirling. I'm freaking out. And I know. Remy and I feel the same way about this. If you have watched either of our channels for a while, if you follow us on Instagram, you know that we both love Revolve and Revolve is sponsoring the pod. I'm I'm speechless. Obviously, it's spring. You know, there's lots of events coming up. There's a lot of weddings coming up. I don't know about anyone else, but there are a ton of weddings, whether it's date night, you need engagement party dresses, whatever, something to wear to festivals, or even if it's just a vacation or you're just looking for good athleisure wear, like literally whatever you're looking for, Revolve has what you need. And you guys, I'm constantly checking the app to see what new items that they have in. And I just seriously love it so much. I'm also constantly wearing things that I got from Revolve on the podcast. Let us know if you want us to start tagging what we're wearing, maybe in the description. I don't know how many of you actually check the description, but yeah, let us know because uh, I always appreciate when you guys say you love our fits on the pod and seriously, nine times out of 10, it's Revolve. One of my favorite jackets that I actually wore in a recent episode, it, it's from Free People, but it's white and black. I wore it with the, a pink dress and my motorcycle boots, but that leather jacket I got from Revolve and it's by the brand Free People. It is seriously one of my favorite jackets. I get so many compliments on it and I just, I'm obsessed. They also have curated shops, whether it's like for vacation or you're going on a date night and it just has good ideas for you. So I feel like it. they've done such a good job at making it a full experience when you're shopping because you can actually like easily look through everything, whether it's just by, you know, the type of clothing that it is or where you're going that you're going to be wearing it, it, what length of the dress or skirt it is. Like there's so many filters and things. It's awesome. And that's why I love shopping at revolve.com. From last minute trips to event dressing and seasonal refreshes, Revolve has you covered with fast two day shipping and hassle free returns all on them. So yeah, go to revolve.com slash pretty basic today to shop our top picks for the season. And don't forget to check out the festival edit while you're there. 
Guys, it just dropped and it is too good. That's R-E-V-O-L-V-E dot com slash P-R-E-T-T-Y-B-A-S-I-C. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from your other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply and now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Okay, wait, but yeah, how are we? Sorry, it's so weird, like doing no headphones. I know. I feel I, like it feels I, like, strange. I feel like you guys are. I know. On I'm the like. Pod. I feel like I'm performing right now. Um, I'm good. Everything's been really good. I have been going to therapy regularly, which I've gone through like ups and downs of therapy for sure in the past, like quite a few years. Over the past like eight years or so, I've like gone and then stopped and gone and stopped. Dabbled, and I'm always yeah. like, yeah, I'm always like, oh, I don't need any more because I I fixed everything. Mm-hmm. I had a situation where I was like, okay, I think it's time to get back into therapy and I'm going to stay in therapy because even if I fix this, which I did within a month, I was like, I'm good again. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to stick with it though, because I want to work through the tools. And you've even told me like, it's good to go on weeks where you think you have nothing to talk about or things where you think you think you're like, oh, I'm totally good right now um, because either you unwrap new things to talk about or you are provided with tools to better help you in future situations. Um, and I've been unwrapping a lot of shit in the past month or so. And I've been feeling very good about it. I've had like some revelations already that I'm feeling good about, uh, which we'll get into later in this episode. Um, But other than that, things are good. Work has been really busy. Everyone is raving about the new podcast. We cannot get you guys to stop saying how good the new podcast is. It's so exciting. (laughs) It hasn't come out yet by the time, by the way. I didn't know. I was like, yeah. Yeah. No, we're really excited though. So many fun work things. Um, I started officially wedding planning. Oh. Speaking of mother you of the bride, me a venue. yes, potential venue. It looked so good. We're still very, very early on, but uh, it's just crazy how fast it comes. Lauren's wedding is in like less than a month now, in like a few weeks, which That's is crazy. crazy. Um, it's just really wild. It's been going by so fast, and I went up to San Francisco for Kaylee's wedding yes. to start planning for her wedding, and uh, she got her hair trial done. We saw the venue. I did the food tasting. Shout out. There's a subscriber at her food tasting who's also getting married at her venue oh my God. like two weeks before K, so it's been really fun, and just being in the bridal time is really cool to watch and see. I saw like Sierra asked her bridesmaids yes. to like for the, with their boxes. It's so cool to see everyone like in their bridal era. No, it's so weird. Yeah. But I love it, but it's so weird. It's like, it's like the start. Even last night, um, Ash had a friend over and was like, oh, have you been having a lot of people pregnant, like friends who are pregnant or having babies or whatever? And I said, I was like, for the first time in my life, I'm entering that era. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I'm a decade behind because if I stayed in Riverside, I feel like Ellie's just such a bubble. If I stayed in Riverside, I'm sure all of this would have been sooner like when I was like 20 you know and now I feel like now my friends are starting to get married and have kids like even Alicia my best friend from high school like I just met her baby like a few weeks ago and he's so he looks like Jack Jack I know you're listening I literally like he looks like Jack Jack from the Incredibles like Like, he's so cute baby like perfect oh my god and he's so cute and such a good baby and I was just like like even when I met him I was I started like tearing up and I was like we've talked about this like when we were in middle school we always would reference like one day when I have kids or like oh I hope our kids are friends or like whatever the case is I'm like it is so dystopian like to like be like feel like I'm I just feel like it's a whole different I like love it and I hate it because I I feel so old and it like time goes by too quickly I feel that when I was with Kay we have always had talks about being on like similar timelines or Mm -hmm. like talks about like okay when we get married you're gonna be my maid of honor or if we get married uh we're gonna get engaged at this time we're gonna get married at this time we're gonna have kids at this time and I found out she's been telling people everyone's like what are you gonna have kids she goes 
I don't know. Ask Remy. She literally <laughs> says I love that. Because that. we're on the same timeline, allegedly, which we did like have a long talk. And we're like, we want to move, like be like neighbors or close to each other and like have kids at the same time. And it's like, we used to obviously dream about it, but now it's like, it could be a plausible real thing. It's same so thing. weird. And Even- it's so rare to have friendships where you last that long. <laughs> for sure. You know, like mm-hmm. Kay and Alicia for me, like for both of us. Like you always talk about that with your friends growing up, but it's so rare to actually it follow through. So yeah. like it's it's so cool. It's so cool. It's just so weird. It's like weird for me too because yeah, they were just like random plans that we had, but like now we're like, oh my god, we're actually it worked out. <laughs> we're actually engaged at the same time. Like we were we were like we're psychic with it all, but it's been really fun. And the I haven't like actually like done much wedding stuff. I'm really excited to jump into that eventually, but uh, right now I'm still like taking my sweet time with it. But also I actually am glad because I know you so well, even though we're so different. (laughs) I know that if you picked out your napkins this week, by the time your wedding comes, you would change them. That's why I don't have tattoos. No, I, yeah. And that I'm glad you're taking your time because I know you would just redo everything in six months anyway. Agreed. I mean, Agreed. I don't know if it would work out because I'm sure Cal, me, and Ollie would be like, Remy, we're not letting you change these freaking napkins. And you'd be like, but I want the champagne, not the egg white. Egg white. I mean, egg like white. Egg shell color. Egg white. <laughs> egg white. I like an egg white. A clear. <laughs> you do love an egg a, white. <laughs> a, a filmy, liquidy. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> so yeah. So point being, I'm actually glad you're taking your time. And you can go to like more weddings and see like what you even want, what you like. I know. Also, it sucks because you want, I can't imagine battling where you're like I want it to feel classic but still somewhat trendy like now we look at trends a few years ago and they seem so like tacky you mm-hmm. know what I mean for sure I was with Murph last night he came over and we were just like blah, 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 blah. and I looked at my phone it'd been six hours I didn't even like I felt like time literally stood, stood still I love that and Murph is also a friend of the show but he's been one of my best friends since high school so like again similar yeah similar situation where we're like holy shit it's happening we've been talking about this for a decade now um but I was telling him because we were just going over all the wedding plans and all the things and I was like I I think I'm actually very happy that I'm taking my time also because I feel slowly but surely my taste is kind of changing. Like I really am trying, I'm trying to be more mature and like I feel like I'm in this like crossroads in my life right now where I am feeling like I'm just growing up and Mm -hmm. finally, I'm like it took long enough, but I feel that. And so I was like, I'm excited actually to take my time because I do think like the wedding that I would have had last year is so different than the wedding that I'm going to have a year or two from now. A thousand percent. And I think I'm going to surprise people. There are certain things where I'm already even thinking of like, I was walking him through like color schemes or things that I just have an idea about. And he was like, wow, like not what I was expecting, but he kept saying chic. 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 You're like, no one's ever described me as chic. Speak for yourself, (laughs) bitch. Look at the shoulder. No, I'm I'm thinking like old Remy. No, I agree. Yeah, you probably, what would it have lit? Can I, should I say what I think it would have looked like? My old, my wedding, if I did it last yeah. year? For sure. A Z gallery convention. <laughs> it would have, <laughs> yes. That would have been like three years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like apartment room. Like mirrors, chandeliers. Oh, yeah. A big pink, chandelier above the dance floor. Pink roses everywhere. Was for it sure. some blue? I think there'd be blue in there too. I would have like died to have peonies. Like, I feel like I would have, mm. like, which I still think they're gorgeous, but I just, like, I think I would have died on that hill. Like, mm. I must do peonies. Now, Sparkle everything. I don't think I'm going to give much away. I think I want it to be like a very much of a surprise. And my planner is like, we're literally the same. We did our meeting and he was like, well, if you want this like surprise element and, and Cal goes, she loves surprise. He's oh. like, oh. so we're like on the same page of like just it being so fun. I am so excited. I'm like, I've already thought about how I'm going to ask everyone to be my maids of honor and my bridesmaids and all my things. I think I'm going to fly. Like, I think I want to be like physically there oh, to I do love it. That. Cause I know some people do fly, which is totally fine. Obviously not everyone can just like get up and leave. But I was like, I really like, I want to go like physically be there with the people. Well, when I also ask. if some people aren't that far, like it'd be different if you have people all around the world. Oh, for know. sure. I also have to read you the funniest text that Steph sent me the other day. Another Steph. friend of the show. And I have to give her a shout out. Cause remember the other day I was like, Stephanie, even though she doesn't reply to me ever, but yes. like I have so much love for Steph, as we all know, one of my best friends from college. And she sent me a screenshot cause a subscriber was like messaging her about me and they were having like a really sweet conversation. So shout out to her. And Steph just texted me a screenshot of their conversation and just put literally no hi. <laughs> didn't reply to my text before. Absolutely nothing. 
you my hoe for life. And then followed up with, <laughs> also love Michaels. Not me smiling when you called me out on the podcast for not responding and choosing to still not reply because I know you know I love you forever. And I replied, my bitch, I was literally just thinking of you in my massage, cackling. Somehow that made me love you even more if it was even possible. How are you? I miss you. I also know I'm not going to get a reply. Never got a reply. <laughs> so Steph, I'll just have like a one-sided conversation with you. Love you so much. I miss you. When it's time for me to ask you to be in the bridal party, I will be flying. I asked if I could go visit her. She didn't reply. So I'm just going to show up at your doorstep. <laughs> I'm going to do that. No, you should. I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn cry. my fine friends off. I'll be babysitter for the weekend. Go have a girl's you day. You know, for a small price, you can pretend you're in Japan. <laughs> On your I'm gonna hit up Jesse Tam. I think <laughs> I know a guy who can do that. I think I have all to say. Everything's been going well with the bridal stuff, Yay. and yeah. Wait, I love that. I feel like that's actually huge because you were. I feel like you were even just worried about that bridal stuff. I mean, I know I'm sure stress will come, but I'm glad that you're not stressed yet because I feel like that's the one thing about we're also in this weird time. Like the amount of even like articles or TikToks I've seen of people being like, are weddings even worth it anymore? Like they're so expensive. And I, I know a lot of people who have just eloped because they're like, I don't want to pay $30,000 for a wedding. For sure. Like it's so, the wedding industry is so expensive. You could have a birthday at the same pla- at the same venue as a wedding and they'll charge the wedding like 20 million times more. Oh, for sure. Like just because it's wedding. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I feel like it has to be hard being like, what is going to even matter to me in a year? Would mm-hmm. I rather just, you know- go on a a sick vacation like I don't know it's so weird I just had a revelation I can't believe I'm keeping my mouth shut about something just like in general with the what me being like I don't know if I want to talk about it it's the shoulder (laughs) it's the shoulder we maybe you should dress more chic maybe I should try um that's so weird because I've never kept my mouth shut in my life but agreed it's been a really fun process it's been a really fun collaborative situation for Cal and I also uh, because I want Cal so cute. Every time I'm like, what do you want? He's like, whatever you want. I'm like, no, like, please. I want this to yeah. be a labor of love from the both of us. And while I appreciate him just being so, I know him though. I know he's going to be like, whatever, until it's very specific. Yeah. I will say though, we've already planned our honeymoon. I know. <laughs> we haven't planned the wedding. We already, we already no, planned the honeymoon. That's what I'm saying. Smart. That's like, what I'm more excited about, which is so funny. At this point, I'm like, also, I mean, I'm in deep with the wedding because I already added on a wedding planner but I'm like I'm more excited for the honeymoon of it honestly, all honestly though like you should be I feel very strongly about for us and Cal is the same I want to like have the wedding and then come home for like a day or two pack and then go to the honeymoon mm-hmm. I want it to be like really soon after just because well, I feel like it'll like keep the excitement also, going you and him have traveled so much and yeah. usually not usually always but I mean maybe this is stereotypically but I just feel like most couples you know whether they don't have the means or just haven't traveled together don't that's like usually their first big trip out of the country together or like mm-hmm. you know their honeymoons like their first time as a which granted it'll be your first time but like you guys have been to japan you guys have been literally all over the world together mm-hmm. so i feel like it'll feel more like a honeymoon if you do go right after the wedding i think you know what you're so right because otherwise it's like we've done that all. Trip. you're yeah. so right mm-hmm. i didn't think about Get it the that honeymoon way honeymoon suite like tell everyone it's our honeymoon like yeah i think it'll feel more special that way I actually so we've been deciding we haven't actually decided on like the specific places we're going but we've talked about like the plan of which we want to do and I saw this TikTok one of which is up for debate is going back to Tokyo Mm -hmm. because we loved Japan just in general and we also wanted to go to like Kyoto we wanted to do a a lot of other places but we only went to Tokyo for two full weeks which wasn't even enough time to see all of Tokyo and I I feel like this was like destined I was on TikTok and I got this uh TikTok of this couple that said, we just got married and we are back in Japan as starting our lives together in the same noodle shop that like we had been to and like talked about this for our whole relationship. And I just like, they were like eating udon in the the shop, but I was like, oh my God, like that's going to be Cal and I, like, we're going to go back to some places and be like, years later now like we we're married were we're starting our lives together like we didn't even you well, actually even... that's what I thought he was gonna propose and he did ah! <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the Tsukiji fish market you this is <laughs> such a cute romantic so Jesse <laughs> yeah Je- Jesse <laughs> <laughs> like parent trap Jesse <laughs> Jesse oh uh, no but it was really Which sweet. I'm so sorry side note very side tangent okay did you know in the parent trap the what is she nanny uh what i think she's, she's like an au pair is that what they're called she was everything 
Okay. That's what she was. Her name isn't it's Jessie. Chessie. Yeah, I know. It's Chessie. Chessie. Yep. Did you know that your whole life? Yeah. Am I the only one who thought it was Jessie? Yeah. Um, I think until like a certain, I think at one point I thought it was Jessie. And then at one point I learned it was Chessie. No, because a month ago I saw someone do Chessie inspired outfits with the parent trap sound on TikTok. And I was like, Chessie. <laughs> and then it hit me. Chessie. And I was like. It is a stranger name than Jessie. That's for my sure. My whole childhood upside down. Like, what is true? What, what's a lie? Chessie? It's beautiful, but Chessie. she's Jessie. She is. You know how many times I've seen Parent Trap? It is an interesting choice for a name. Sorry, Ollie, make that a TikTok. I feel like a <laughs> lot of people will agree with me. <laughs> I was mind blown. And I actually, like, what other names have I gotten wrong? Oh, what other main question. characters in shows? That's a really good I feel like there's so many there's out there. There's probably so many. Anyway, that was my very side tangent that I know for a fact. I'm going to think and I'll come back with research when it, next week. Oh my God, please. I, I will. Commonly, yeah. <laughs> I pictured me crashing your Japan trip, which I wouldn't, by the way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Here's Cal, you know what? You would I love it. Care. You would love it. Cal would hate it. <laughs> You'd be like, hey, Alicia's here. Can we meet up? And he'd be like, I don't want to. I don't think he would hate it. But like, it's your honeymoon. For no, like no, no, a blip. I would never do for that. For like, a, my mom crashed our trip last time. But it wasn't your honeymoon. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, think, but it's just another trip. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> not another trip. That's the thing. Um, I actually am planning on going to Japan this year. You should come though. You and Cal should come really as an engaged want. couple. I want to. <gasps> just an excuse to go. And I would go love to go. to the noodle shop or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would love that. Next week, I'm going to come back. Perfect. With a list of commonly mistaken names yep. amongst TV shows and movies and things. And mm -hmm. we'll go through that. But uh, in conclusion, not sure where we're going to honeymoon for sure yet. But all I know is that it's going to be good. Oh, duh. And I'm very excited about it. Eat good. Lots of bonding. Bonding. Between a newlywed. Mm-hmm um bonding bonding bond approved by the lord finally mm -hmm. oh yeah you've never done it why would you ever no yeah hello a lot of um bond ing <laughs> mm -hmm. love bonding thank god god loves witches Bonds, as well bonding oh bonded. okay <laughs> becoming one bonded and holy matrimony <laughs> oh oh my god <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and that's what i'm always saying Amen. Um, <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm not going to say I would crash your honeymoon because I wouldn't. I fully, I just want, I fully wouldn't. Even if you would be fine with it because I know you would actually be fine with it. Yeah. I, I'd be so happy. <laughs> no, I, no, I would. Oh my God. I've heard horror stories of like families coming on. The, oh my God. Hell no. Well, remember when Megan Trainer came on, she was like, her honeymoon was like a family trip. But at least that was her choice. But yeah. No, she's I so still sweet. That was so nice for her to pay for her family to go to Bora Bora. Oh my God. Although that's expensive. I know. Well, that's because Megan Trainer makes hits. Oh yeah. She got that booty. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, sorry. Continue on. Um, <laughs> but speaking of Japan, I actually do want to go this year to visit Yuka. So yeah. you and Cal should come as in, as engaged. Because last time you were dating. Yes. This time you'll be engaged. Yes. This time we can actually go together versus just seeing each other in the airport for quite literally two minutes. Through the glass. Through the I glass. I just remember being like, I'm going to see her. And then I was like, wait, of course we have to go through customs. Like they're not just going to like let us go wander like a normal airport. I'm you know what so I mean? I'm so sad. I was so sad. Like it hit At me. least I saw you. I know. I'm so glad I got to see you. But yeah, this time we can go together or at least, you know, and it won't be your honeymoon. Also, this time would be so much easier because we can use the live translation on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultras. I... Would love to take that. And also, I think that'd be so helpful for everything. Oh my God. Remember when Cal and I, did we, did I tell you about our omakase experience? No. Did I not tell you about that? No. Where they stuck us in a broom closet? No. I didn't tell you this? No. Oh my God. When we recapped, maybe it was just Cal and I. Cal wanted to take me to like a very authentic omakase in Japan. And we booked it through the hotel. And like we went to the experience. It was very expensive. Yeah. And- they put us in like a, a small little closet where, and everybody else was at the actual sushi bar. And like, we didn't understand what was happening. And I told Mia, and Mia said that like, it's not uncommon for them to do that to American people. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> but like, we just didn't know what was happening. What? Yeah, like, what do you mean? Um, 
I'm not quite sure. I think that we were probably like there wasn't room. No, there was room. And they like they made it seem like we were put there because like it, they didn't have space, but like people and we had to be there on time. We got there early and people like came like hours into the dinner. There's there were spots open at the sushi bar the whole meal. It was honestly hilarious. But I like if I had translate Trans- yeah I would have been able to maybe understand a little bit better what was happening again being people pleasers it's like I don't want to bother you like okay we'll just do, like but it would be so nice to I actually understand yeah when I can barely ask for ketchup from servers like he, out here yeah who speak English yeah let alone being in a different country I'm like oh I'm sorry if I no it, it was like oh for like me being me I was like oh my god no of course like do you want me to sweep up after too like yeah. I can just grab the broom right here like oh, of course I'll, I'll lick the floors for you it was like it was very strange but yeah Mia said she was like oh yeah like that's it's not the craziest thing oh that's ever god. happened for sure would have loved to know what's going on do you want to hear the cutest thing in the world yeah so I went home the other day and my mom and dad told me that my grandma my grandma's turning she's an Aries you know I had no idea mm-hmm. I didn't put it together till like recently because I like never thought about what sign my grandma I was like it tracks what so it's her birthday very soon and she said my dad asked her what do you oh she's so cute I keep trying to call her on the podcast but she doesn't pick up because she's too busy in her senior living home having so much fun I've told you she like literally is never in her room but she said for her birthday her one wish stop is for all of us to go out to dinner with my family and my dad's side of the family like my dad's sister and her son and I don't know if my cousin's going to make it, but I I haven't talked to my cousins in years. Like my family's not super, super close. And like, even within that, we have a very small family. Uh, But my grandma was like, for my one wish for my birthday, I want both sides of the family to get together for dinner. And so we're all going to get together. I know. And I'm actually really excited because I have her trapped there so I can make her do my translate (laughs) with me. (laughs) Oh my God. Well, okay. Okay, If you guys don't know, and I demonstrated it a little while back, the Ultra has an amazing translate feature. So if you pull up the interpreter, You can pick from a slew of different languages. I have mine on Korean right now because that's what I'm going to talk to my grandma in. Um, I don't know much, to be honest. And I would love, I just got to get her on the pod. My grandma speaks English, but not super, super well. So, So my whole life I've been able to have like small conversations with her, but I think it would be really cool for not only for me to be able to talk to her, but also I feel like someone like Cal or Ollie, like they yeah. probably exchanged only like a few words with or her. <laughs> or you, you haven't met her <laughs> yet, I've right? I haven't met her. I would love, I would love me like this. Wait, but she would love that. Oh, I would literally I would, cry. I would love to actually get her on the pod. I will clear my schedule. That'd be so cute. But she hates to like come anywhere. <laughs> like she stopped coming to holidays because as soon as she got to my house, she'd be like, I want to go home. Like literally she's, you Rome. she's tired she's got to keep her feet up and I understand that so it's really cool because you can actually like switch the orientation so basically like I could be looking at it my way and then my grandma could be facing the phone and like reading it her way and I can speak in English and it'll translate into Korean or vice versa again there's so many languages to choose from so okay let's do a little role playing oh, I'm it. my grandma you're me I'm Yang Cruz and I say like this we had a lovely meal together and I'm mm-hmm. about to leave I go like this 사랑해 eat the bio I love you. See you later. I don't know if she'd say I love you on the first date, but. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but it's nice because then I can see like the words show up. Mm-hmm. I love you so much. Thank you for giving me my best friend. 정말 사랑합니다. 절 주셔서 감사합니다. What a beautiful voice. Like she sounds like a newscaster. Yes. <laughs> <It's> me. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I you love you so oh much. Oh my God. Also, I like. I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's really cool the way that they have it laid out because then you can just have it flat in between the two people. Like you can still have eye contact instead of like. I no, when like, I go you know see her, I mean? I'm going to get a video also because like I want that video for me. I want to you meet know? your grandma. You're going to have an amazing dinner where you can talk to her. She's so cute. And then we can go to Japan, see Yuka. Yes. And we will bring our ultras. Galaxy AI is here on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. And you guys can get yours now at the link in the description. We here love skims at Pretty Basic. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for everybody. 
As a large booby girly, we all know that good bras are very hard to come by, but Skims has truly changed the game for me. I, you guys just got my first strapless bra in like a decade from Skims because Alicia's always talking about hers and I have to tell you, it is amazing. I was always taping my boobs, which is totally fine, but there are just certain times where I don't want to be ripping tape off at the end of the night and a strapless bra is so great. I also love, love, love their t-shirt bra. It's the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra. I also love the Fits Everybody plunge bra and the wireless form t-shirt bra. Truly any bra that's just like lightweight and comfortable that I can wear under a t-shirt or under a dress or truly whatever I am so for. Skims bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest materials, so you'll always feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Also, Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and style. Skims bras are available now in 62 sizes. Yes, you heard me right, from 30A to 46H. Believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims bras are now available at skims.com plus get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you after you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. Speaking of my grandma and generational trauma, oh, that's what I've been working love through. Love it. That's what I've been working through in therapy. Oh, we got two shoulders now. <laughs> So chic and chic. Uh, No, in all seriousness, I've definitely been working through uh, just a lot of, and I think a lot of people listening, whether you are Asian or not. I just relate a lot of stuff to being Asian because I myself am Asian. um, Because I myself am Asian. (laughs) Sorry, I did not mean to laugh. It was just funny. No, it's true. I mean, it's true. A lot of my, I mean, all of my identity comes from like my history and literally my grandma. And I know I've discussed this before, but my grandma literally fleeing the one who I'm going to talk to on my phone and and do the little translate thing with her. Like she escaped North Korea and did all that to give me the life that I have now. And I feel like a lot that I grapple with is going to therapy or like feeling like I need to go to therapy to talk things out. And I'm like, I have no right to Mm. feel these things or to complain about these things. And uh, when like she's gone through all of that or you know, it's something that I've definitely like grappled with for a long time, but, um, something that I've been unraveling in therapy lately is the idea of never feeling good enough. And again, oh, what I was going to say is I know a lot of people, I know everybody feels that way. Um, but when I'm speaking about it in therapy, I know a lot of it comes from, uh, the way that I was raised. And then from that is the way that my parents were raised. And just like, again, generationally feeling throughout history Uh, Like we're not good enough for our parents and it's a big thing amongst Asian culture. Again, I'm sorry to make it just about Asian culture, but like that's who I am. And so that's what I really like go back to, to try and understand more. But yeah, that's what I've been really dealing with is like not feeling good enough and never feeling good enough. And uh, how much more do I need to do? Like, I feel like I'm constantly trying to do as much as I can and also never being fully never allowing myself to like take a break or never allowing myself to be fully proud of myself because I could always be doing better. I could always be making my parents more proud. I could always be making my grandparents more proud. My grandma literally escaped North Korea. Like how do I make her proud of me for like this dumb little influencer thing that I do? Like yeah, no. it's, it's a lot where I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working through it. I'm not, I don't have an answer yet, but I, it's been something that I've been like definitely trying to unveil of like, okay, at what point am I, can I finally just say like, I'm proud of you to myself. Because I haven't gotten there yet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> My bitch. <laughs> Dude, no, honestly, like, I can't even imagine that type of pressure at all. Like, oh, my God, at all. Especially, yeah, like, you can't have a bad day because in comparison, it's like, oh, you literally were able to flee a country. and Or even, like, my parents also, like, yeah. coming here and... Providing me the life that I have. Exactly. I'm like, my problems are not real problems, which to some degree, they're not. And also to some degree, I'm allowed to feel that way for sure. But it's definitely just like a weird thing that I've been feeling a lot. I've never like really dove. I've never really taken the time to articulate or like to find the Mm. words or just to even allow myself to have this conversation yeah you know what I mean I feel like for so long I'm like it's fine it's fine I'm not even gonna talk about it and then finally I was like I feel like I should talk about it because 
I do want to have kids one day and I feel like I do need to work through this shit before I do have kids because I don't want to put this on my kids. I don't want my kids to think that I'm not good enough. And my parents are amazing. Let me just say that. Like I have the best parents. I love them so, so much. Um, but I just need to figure out why I don't feel like I'm good enough for anybody Mm. before I put that on a kid. Yeah. I have so many thoughts. Please. I feel like that was, I said that all wrong. No, you did a really good job. Okay, good. Oh my God. That was great. Okay, good. Thank you. One, gen, like genuinely, I can't understand that pressure. I understand what it's like to feel that way normally with my parents, but like I can't even imagine the pressure of, like I can relate to my parents sacrificing for me, but I mean, my mom was adopted. I don't really know her side of the family. I'm not close to my, like that, the generational part of it, like that, I can't understand that pressure, like at all. And especially if my grandma fled North Korea, I feel like I couldn't, get a B on anything I feel like I couldn't have just a day where I'm like on my period and like feeling and like cranky you know what I mean it's just like in comparison it it feels it would feel dumb it's like I can't did you see the SNL the who's the new guy on SNL Marcelo did you see love his his stand up oh yeah when they said his mom who speaks communism yeah it was it was literally like I can't have a bad day because my mom literally had her rights stripped from her like what do you say to that you know what I mean and I was just like oh my like that's so I've never even had to think of that you know what I mean um but I did see that I thought that was really funny because I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the way I'm just Mm -hmm. glad you're talking about it Mm -hmm. because even wasn't this more of a newer revelation and I also like I, I feel like maybe I even might be prematurely talking about it because I haven't been able to figure out and like sort through my feelings and that's why I wanted to go to therapy like I want to get myself in the best place to be the best mom that I can be and that's truly why I wanted to seek therapy and like work through a lot of like childhood shit that I so that I don't I know I'm gonna traumatize my kid to some extent because like every parent does and that's just that is parenting in general but I I just don't want it to be the things that I went through It'll be something different. <laughs> I want to work through that so I can be the best mom that I possibly can be. Oh, well, one, I haven't had it. I always I already know you will be. Like, I haven't had a yeah. doubt about that. And again, not to say that my parents weren't amazing. No. But we just, I mean, also with the ha- the cards that my parents were dealt, they literally moved here when they were kids and had to start a full life for themselves. And like, that brings on a lot of shit too. So just to say, I don't want my mom to get mad at me. I love you, mom. You did great. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But- Also, I think what's the generation, like, obviously your grandma did what she thought was best for her. I think in the end, like, especially generationally, it's like everyone just does the best they can with the cards they're dealt, you know? And like, only your grandma knows the reasons she did what she had to do. And same with your mom and then same with you and even same with your kid. Like, Mm -hmm. it's like, we can't change when we were born or like what circumstance and cards were dealt. But I don't know. I, I don't. I truly don't think you're going to be a horrible mother. Thank you. Because why? That kid's got an awesome aunt. He's going <laughs> to fuck it. <laughs> Kick ass, Uncle Ollie. It's true. No, I mean, I fully agree. And I think, um, I don't know. I've, I, I'm just starting to kind of like scratch the surface of this. So I just really would like to understand where this is stemming from. And also, I would like to receive the tools to be able to provide myself more grace with things because I do think I'm way too hard on myself and I think also it's hard because what we do isn't taken seriously like I know a lot of people are probably listening are like those aren't real problems problems and especially being an influencer they're not real problems problems and I totally understand that that's the thing I think that's why I'm extra hard on myself because I'm like these are I feel vapid I feel like but you're not but I do feel like, who am I to be complaining when this is my job? Like, that that this is what I grapple with every day, where I'm like, I feel like I shouldn't. And to some degree, I understand that. I really do. Yeah. I just go back and forth a lot in my head. So I just want to understand where it's coming from, why I never feel good enough. Why, if you had to take a guess, is there, like, one thing that you're like, oh, I'm just like, why you don't feel proud? I don't know. And I think it's also because I was – laying in bed trying to think about this and I was like I'm speaking about work right now Mm -hmm. that I never thought like right now I don't feel like I'm good enough in when I was dating I was never good enough Mm. never any any time like anything with a guy happened and like they didn't want to see me anymore I'd be like yeah because I'm like ugly and stupid and like I was I'm just like really yeah I'm really mean to myself and I want to figure out why um and I want to know also if there's ever going to be a point where I'm like 
you did it. Because I don't see that ever happening. I really don't. I feel like, I mean, we all know I'm a huge fan of therapy because it's helped me a lot. But whether it's in therapy or not, I think that's the beauty of this part that you're in right now is like figuring out one, where that stemmed from. When was the first time you ever felt that? And what were those circumstances? And I feel like a lot of times our trauma is our like childhood self screaming, just like being like, I, I'm here. Like, why do I not feel safe? Why do I not feel seen? And you think getting older and becoming an adult, it goes away. But like that childhood hurt self who was either neglected or abandoned or whatever the case is, is like still there and hurt and screaming. And it's so beautiful to be able to come to yourself and be like, wow, what have I buried for years? And a lot of things come from our, like our childhood, Mm -hmm. whether it's our parents' intention or not, like Mm -hmm. we're all going to fuck up our kids in some way because we're going to do one thing and then overcompensate what our parents did. And then it'll be like, that's why they always say it's a pendulum thing. Like a domino effect. Yeah. Totally. Um, But yeah, like, I don't know. Try to like think of the first time you don't have to do it here because that gets deep and woo, (laughs) we don't have (laughs) tissues. Um, But like, yeah, the first time you ever felt not good enough or the first time you ever felt that and like, what was that scenario? And then what's cool though is as an adult, you're able to reprocess that and be like, oh my God, it was so obvious that wasn't true, but I clearly believed that. Or like, I took what this teacher said about me or I took what this parent said about me or my mom or dad. And for whatever reason, it stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Like I, like it's, I, it's a huge memory. There's been times I like, I remember sitting with my mom being like, oh yeah, I distinctly remember you saying this and it affected me this way. And she was like, oh my God, I don't even remember that conversation. I'm so sorry that that's what you chose to like, like keep, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, but I I guess it's going to be something, you know, it's always going to be something. Hearing what you just said and me thinking of like specific answers, I can't imagine not holding on to that anymore Mm -hmm. after I've held onto it like my entire life. Like, have you been able to let go? No, a thousand percent. I think- you do. I, I think um, through therapy, I'll be able to work through that all. But I just can't imagine. I can't right now where I'm at. I'm like, I can't imagine ever letting go of that. Oh, my God. I mean, I think the biggest thing is you're already starting the process. It's a long process. Mm-hmm. And slowly but surely you're like, oh, well, I can't imagine what it would have been like. First is like empathy of understanding like things those other people have been through. And then you're like, oh, wow. Like, you know, whatever. But then two comes down to you realizing Like, I don't don't know. And I I still haven't fully figured it out myself, but I think where I have gotten to the point is like before it felt like a fact versus now it just feels like, oh, that was someone's opinion. Just like a hate comment or just like whatever. It's like, oh, that was an opinion that I chose to take to heart and make it about who I am and my core. But yeah, you really, you really do. I think you're gonna, you're already, you've started that and it'll just feel more and more less of a fact. Like it's not something about, it's not who you are. It's just these lies that you've, fed to yourself for years like honestly like it's no it's it's actually scary how much because I can be the same way I can be so hard on myself and I'm like Alicia like you're a piece like you're worthless like no one would ever want you like like no one would like why would anyone be attracted to you like you're so lame like all of these like negative things that like they're all fucking lies don't want to cry no it's like if our roles were switched and I let's let's say one of Ashley's friends was just like so mean to me and like made fun of me and call me names or something like that. You'd be like, bitch, what the fuck? That was them. Like that is a them problem. Yeah. And I'm so sorry to you. Like I could look at my childhood self and be like, wow, I'm so sorry that you never felt good enough. Like you were always so good enough. Like you were perfect. You were amazing. Like I know it's hard. It's hard. It sucks. And it's hard. But there's like those instances that like, honestly, you may have even blacked out. There were random conversations that I had um, with my therapist or with my mom where I would be like, oh, I forgot that happened. But then I'm like, damn, well, clearly it stung. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I remember that? Mm -hmm. And if it's like little things like that. Mm -hmm. But some people, I mean, everyone has different philosophies and different things. But I I know a lot of people will even say like, take a photo of your childhood self and like put it on your bathroom mirror yeah and just every day even while you're brushing your teeth just like hype her up and you realize like oh I'm that same little girl inside like I'm still her you know that's such a weird thought to have too I feel like this is just a way that I've always felt like I can't remember a time when I didn't feel this way but it is weird to think that was me and I felt that way even when I was young like I, I can't remember a time when I didn't feel this way but when I was a child I felt the same way. Yeah. And like little Remy felt the same way that I feel now. Yeah. But like, 
talking helps a lot because the more you talk about it, the more you're like, oh, I kind of feel bad for myself. And then you're like, oh, wait, that wasn't real. Like, why did I, why? And then you're in the questioning of like, why am I like this? Like, and then, but once I get there, then I'm like, I shouldn't feel bad for myself. I can't feel bad for myself. Oh, no, I feel so bad for my young self. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you poor thing. You were so hard on yourself. Like you literally had this like narrative in your head that like you were invisible. That was something I always struggled with. Mm -hmm. I was like, people will never remember me. I'm not worth mem remembering. LOL, I decided to make, do internet stuff. Like, yeah. like I truly always was like, I, I just always thought no one would ever like want to be my friend or remember me or I was too shy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, um, you would look at me and be like, what? Like, none of that's true. Yeah. But like, clearly it's, it took like, you know, oh my God. But I could look at you and be like, bitch, not proud. <sighs> because that's weird. We have a podcast together. I'm proud of it. <laughs> so crazy you're like you're not proud about it fucking this. proud <laughs> i can't even upload that much i'm sorry like <laughs> actually i love you so much and i'm so proud of you like no we're about it's all you right now no no, no 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 how to hear you for you to be able to give me the advice advice that you just gave me and that was just like scratching the surface the reason why i even brought this up on the podcast today was because i was at your house for three hours the other night and like i wish i had filmed the pep talk you gave me and like we're tr we're just like not repeating what happened the other night because like it was so it was so different but like I'm so eternally grateful to have a friend like you who oh oh my god I'm so grateful to have a friend who's even one tenth as supportive as you are and also like I've never I've always had to be the older sibling oh fuck I hate crying <laughs> she goes I love it I've never been I've never like had an older figure around me because I was like the older sibling and I always had to be strong. I always had to be like the guinea pig of everything. But to have someone who like, this is scary for me to go through and to um, be able to lean on you and like have like an older sister figure. To, like, fuck. Thank you. The Cheeto pup. Thank you so much. No, I love you. So much. It means more than you know. You take care of everyone else around you. Oh my God, I did my own glam. I'm not <laughs> wasting any money right now. <laughs> You're not used to being taken care of. Never. Literally ever. That literally makes so much sense. <laughs> but I, we're going to have homework. Ugh. Okay. You're going to, one, ask for help. Because you never, ever, like you never I feel like you're always just like, I'm fine. No one worry about me. No one worry about me. <laughs> like all your friends and family like want to be there for you during that. And I know that. And I appreciate everyone but that. You have to allow it. You have to let it. It might feel hard and awkward and horrible. And you're like, no, it's fine. I'd rather be in control. I can do this. But like, let Cal fucking like cook you dinner every now and then. I know. Like, I need even to. He begs. That, like he's, I know. I know. He's like, no, Rim, let me do this for you. And you're like, it's fine. It's fine. I'll do it. And it's like, it doesn't matter whose taste better. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter like, who took a third of the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, let, let him help. Like, I think that's a beautiful part of your guys' relationship now is like, that's the whole point of a marriage is so you can lean on each other. For sure. And then friends and everything. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Galaxy AI is the new it girl. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> no, I just want to say like. Thank you. I'm going to work on it. And I really am. Like, I'm so proud that I'm trying to unwrap all this shit because obviously I've, like, pushed it down for a long time. But I'm so proud of you to be able to, to – the, the advice you just gave me on this episode slash also the advice you gave me – slash the advice you're always giving me. Like, to see you here right now sitting in this exact location, like, compared to years ago – Slash also like when we first met, for you to be able to be the one giving the advice means that you've worked so hard on yourself. And I can't even imagine the shit that you've unpacked in your sessions, like and, and years of consistently going and years of taking care of your mental health. Like I think that you should be very proud of yourself because to be able to to sit in my position is one thing, but to sit in your position and have worked through all of that already to be able to give the advice is a huge accomplishment. Thank so you. You should be very proud of yourself. 
I just don't want our podcast to be us just complimenting each other all the time. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, all they do is compliment each other. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. However, I'm very excited for you. This is the Saturn return. This is the turning 30. Like all the shit you're going through right now, you're going to look back and be like, oh my God, it was so necessary. Like, mm-hmm. and you're just going to be so like, that's one of the, it's like hard, but it's life. And it's one of those beautiful things. And like, everyone has to come to a point in their life, whether they're 30 or 60 and unlearn the things they've learned from their childhood and like Mm -hmm. trauma and stuff. And I like, you're going to be the best fucking mom ever. I've always wanted a little sister. You can be annoying at me. It's fine. (gasps) I couldn't imagine. So (laughs) play it back. (laughs) Cute. (laughs) Cute. (laughs) I love you so much. I love you. Thank you. Ah, I cry again. Sorry, you have plants tonight. <laughs> you show up to dinner. <laughs> like gone. Streaks. 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 Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I love you so much. Thank you for listening. Thanks for being my bestie. Speaking of bestie, Northwest coming out with a new album. She's Bef- coming out with an album? Yes, before Rihanna, before Cardi B. <laughs> like, what? It's called Elementary School Dropout. She just announced. Shut up. Wait, but that's so cute because of like her dad in college. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Waterworks coming back. That's so sweet. Insane. Anyways, before we on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, watching our podcast. It means so much. Obviously, go watch the new Pretty X Unfiltered podcast too. Yes. Go watch Cooking with Remy and Rem Life. The reviews are in. You guys are loving it. Comment that you're proud of her. We love you. I love you. Yeah. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Bye.